And now it's time for your first cup of political brew. Good morning. Welcome to New Center Maine's Political Brew. Glad you could be with us. We're joined this morning by our analysts, former Republican State Senator Phil Harriman and Democratic activist Betsy Sweet. Good morning to you both. Good morning. There will be no budget deadlock or government shutdown in Maine in June. Democrats have passed an $8.3 billion biennial budget without Republican support, creating some hard feelings. Betsy, which side gets to make the better case about this to the voters next year? Oh, I think the Democrats do. Um, you know, I think it was unfortunate. The um, I think the behavior of the Republican caucus, just on the supplemental, it took eight weeks to do something that had everything in it that they wanted. This is really a continuing resolution. I don't think anyone in Maine, no matter what party, is ready for a shutdown, is ready for not knowing what their school budget is going to be or what their businesses can count on. So this just was a continuing resolution, which we don't really have a name for here in Maine, but um, this that allows the, the government to go on. And now they can get to the work of making changes or things that they need to change or add or subtract in the budget. So I think it was a good move. I think it's unfortunate that the Republicans had signaled early on that they weren't going to negotiate, um, that they didn't want to pass a two-thirds budget, which is what was what prompted this. So I think we're in good shape. I think it was a smart thing to do, and I think now we can get to the business of making the changes we need to make. And Phil, Democrats, so many of them say it was the Republicans uh, dragging their feet on the supplemental budget a few weeks ago that convinced them they had to go this way. Were they right? No, I, I don't think they were. I think they're going to regret having done this for several reasons. I served in the Senate at a time when Angus King was concerned about his relevance as an independent and used this tactic to jam home a budget. And uh, it, it created uh, uh, unintended consequences for years to come. I think the Republicans would have come to a two-thirds budget. They did not want to be the ones that were labeled as the state government shutting down. I think, frankly, as we're seeing in Washington, Democrats uh, have the power and they're going to use every lever of it to get exactly what they want. And that's what they did here. There were 14 bills brought up by Republican legislators to curb Governor Mills' emergency powers and they went nowhere. But do they have a point, Phil? Should the legislature have a say in extending emergency declarations by any governor? Yeah, I, I think they do, Pat. This isn't about Democrats and Republicans. It's about the legislative role in our, our Constitution. Many people say it's a co-equal branch of government. I actually think the legislative branch has a little bit more authority than the governor because it can decide what laws to pass on uh, or not. And I, I think the legislature is is um, unfortunately giving up their constitutional authority to uh, the chief executive. Yeah, I, you know, I think that a governor has to have the power to declare emergencies um, for a length of time that the emergency lasts. When it goes into this extended kind of year long, I think Phil's right. I think that there does need to be some legislative um, input and what that looks like. And, you know, but the, the bills that were considered were really to curtail her power completely. So I don't think that that was the right way to go. But I do think that the legislature needs to stand up and exert their power as well. Governor Mills sent out a couple of fundraising emails to supporters this past week, and they're the first real evidence of her re-election campaign. She's made no formal announcement yet. But Betsy, what do you make of, of her timing and what she's up to? Well, I think, you know, I think she's been sort of busy with the COVID thing. And I think actually she's been doing her job, which is amazing, um, and really trying to make, you know, make sure that Maine gets through this safely, both economically in terms of our health. So I think she's finally turning there. So I think she's definitely saying she's running. And, um, you know, I think it's time to get started. And I think, you know, I think people are going to um, judge by what's actually happening. And Maine is at the top of the list in terms of how well we're dealing with COVID, um, in terms of our cases. I think by 2022, we're going to be at the top of the list in terms of our economy as well. And Phil, the question for you as a Republican is who is Janet Mills going to be running against? We have no announcement yet from former Governor Paul LePage. Well, he's done everything but formally announce. He has sent all of the signals over the last several months that uh, he is going to run. Uh, I think he's been wise to keep a low profile and let the atmospheric conditions of the Trump administration, uh, you know, drift off into the sunset before uh, stepping forward to uh, to run. All indications are that's his plan. And if it's not, he should make that clearer soon so that those who may have an interest in it uh, have time enough to properly prepare. Do you think if he does run, will there be other Republicans who challenge him in a primary? 
I don't, I don't think so. I think Paul LePage's legacy within the heart and soul of the Republican Party that votes in primary elections is solid. I, I don't think someone would take him on in that regard. Betsy, do you think he's a strong candidate to run against Janet Mills? No. And Phil, this is your big chance. Come on. I know. I know. <laughs> no, you we know, need I, you here. We can't, <laughs> we can't let you do that. We need you here. You know, I think that there is a legacy, but I think as we get further and closer to 22, 2022, I think people are going to actually see the the de detriment and maybe the of someone as extreme as uh, LePage and Trump. They're going to see that play out more and more and see a positive alternative. So I think that you know his his um, popularity, his cotton in the state is is going to go down as as he goes forward, not go up. And I think as things start to come around and we start to see things move in a good direction, which I think they're that's all the indications. I think his um, attractiveness, his appeal is going to wane. Also talking on the, about the Republican Party, we learned this past week that a, a new conservative caucus has formed after the state party voted overwhelmingly last weekend not to censure Senator Susan Collins over her vote to convict President Trump at his impeachment. Uh, this group claims to have about two dozen people. Phil, I'll start with you again. Will this have any real impact on Maine's Republican Party? Well, it, it could. I'm encouraged that they are a caucus within the party as opposed to leaving and starting their own party. I don't think that would be very effective. But I, I do think Republicans uh, need to be uh, inclusive. If you're fiscally very, very conservative and politically very, very liberal on social issues, there, there needs to be. And I believe there is a place in the Republican Party for all points of view in terms of the role of government in our lives? Well, you know, I think that the Republicans have a problem because unfortunately the, the people on that very, very conservative side don't play well with others. And so, you know, they don't do well in, in a group and trying to compromise. And, you know, as we've seen, we've seen it nationally, we've seen it in Maine. And so I think that, you know, the important thing that you said is that there's two dozen members. You know, we, we keep lifting all this up as if it's like a big thing. Two dozen members is not a huge, is not a lot of people. So I think that this is a chance for the main Republican Party to sort of come back to the Republicans, I think, in the in the history of Bill Cohen and Olympia Snow and Mar Margaret Chase Smith. You know, this is their opportunity to be that kind of umbrella and bring those people in. Whether or not they do it, I don't know. All right. We have lots more to talk about this morning on Political Brew. We'll do that in the next hour. New Center Maine is back after this.